We're here today with Rob Kramer, the designer of TurboDrift. Welcome to Design Diary, the podcast where you get to look inside my board game design notebook as well as what's going on inside my head. We look at a new word each day from the sense of mechanics, tone, theme, or inspiration for a full game. Today's word is... Lexicographer. And we have our first two-time, or actually this would be your third time technically, uh, yeah. our first repeat uh, designer here, and it's, it's Rob Kramer. Happy to be here. I always want to say Rob the Kramer. It's hard not to say that. That's my Twitter handle. That's <laughs> how I am presenting myself to the world. It's on my business cards. So that's basically who I am. Oh, and I missed, the, I got so excited that I missed the definition. Lexicographer, an author or editor of a dictionary. Yeah, that's that's it. <laughs> Woo! There's there's no other no other description there. There's a there's some examples, but I'm sure you can. It's it's pretty literal. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> um, I I have been playing a lot of games lately that deal with books or writing in some ways. So I've been playing a lot of Ex Libris, which is about running your own library. I'm jealous. And then. Yeah, it's it's pretty. I mean, I've only played it solo, so you can't be too jealous. I want to <laughs> play with actual humans. Um, and then I've been playing uh, Tim Fowers and Jeff Beck's Hardback, yeah, which is about an author writing a book. Um, Ex Libris has something to do with the uh, dictionary, kind of what I wanted to get into. Um, dictionaries have alphabetical listings; they have pronunciation of words. Some have pictures, which is nice. Um, you look up the spelling to use a dictionary, and you can look up the origin of the word. So the two kind of versions of games that I have, one of them is a you are literally printing a dictionary. So you're not actually writing the <laughs> dictionary or, or editing the words that are there. You're printing it out, and so you're, you're working at the press, and you're putting in um, different sections of the dictionary, make sure, making sure that it lines up, that it's alphabetical, um, that everything is spelled right. And so it's kind of like a tiling game. Um, have you heard of a uh, penny press? Yeah, I've seen penny press. It looks great. Yeah. So, so, so penny press is you're laying out the front page of a newspaper. Yep. Um, it's, it deals with kind of generic stories and advertisements and that kind of stuff. Um, but, but this one would have um, the, literally the first thing that came to my mind when I heard an author or editor of Dictionary was uh, the joke where you, you would say, oh, if you look up gullible in the dictionary, there's a picture of you. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I like the ideas of having pictures along with words um, because just a, if, if you look at a game that would just be words on tiles – I think that would be so boring. It would yeah. look so so bad. But like, if you have these words with pictures to break it up, and those pictures could be different scoring abilities, where if they are next to uh, certain letters or certain length of words, nice. um, they could uh, score different bonuses. Um, but how do you get these words into the into the dictionary? Um, what I wanted was I, I follow. Uh, Merriam-Webster's Dictionary on Twitter, and they are a, an amazing social media presence. And most dictionaries at the end of the year announce what what the word of the year or what new words are going to be added into the dictionary. Absolutely. And so these don't have to be real words yet. Um, you don't have to deal with um, the the luggage, the baggage that that comes with real words and organizing them they could be completely made up words just just you're looking for length you're looking for um an alphabetical order but it doesn't matter what the word actually means and so you could have weird definitions underneath you could have you could invent your own words but the way that you get words into your dictionary is that you there's a kind of a drafting phase beforehand where you are voting on which words deserve to be in the dictionary. And so you have a pool of words that you're pulling from, and then people vote on which ones they want, which ones they don't want, um, kind of taking turns eliminating words as well as choosing words instead of just drafting everyone taking what they want. Um, 
So you can debate whether Flurgum really deserves to be in the dictionary <laughs> as opposed to Jor Lennis Slat exactly. kind of stuff. Um, so, I mean, I'm not necessarily aiming for like a party game type feel, but it doesn't have to be too heavy. So you draft tiles to make um, for their pictures, for their alphabetical um, uh, space, uh, for their length, and then um, the words themselves kind of give bonuses. And whoever fills up their dictionary first wins or, or gets a certain amount of points. Um, so that was the first one that I had. Um, so before you get on your second, second one, one, I'm yeah, I'm, yeah please I'm do th- jump in. I'm thrilled that you touched on the one note that I wrote down, which was the word of the year, because to me <laughs> the word of the year has so much behind it. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's political, it's definitely topical, and I just like I can imagine like the the build up to what they choose is it's mm-hmm. it's probably not chosen lightly, and right. The only thing that I thought of with this was just some sort of game where. It was a bracket that that was the words that that led up to the word of the year, and they were battling them out. And whatever method of gameplay got words to go on to the next one, where you know we're throwing Smurgle against whatever your other words were, <laughs> um, and then the reason that one you know makes it through, and then what it has to go up against, and just being this big epic thing. I don't know. I mm-hmm. just love the whole concept of the word of the year because it's always something. What was last year's word? Was uh, it was um, the the oh my ah, oh, we did I'm an fake, episode. I on mean, it. some some of them do like fake news. Like fake news was was one for a lot of outlets. Yeah, ours was. What was the the term for when you're when you remove yourself from court? I can't remember the name of it. Uh, when you oh, remove yourself gosh. from the running. Uh, what's his name? Did it? Sessions did it, wasn't it? Uh. Oh, uh, recuse. Yes, that was the word of the year last year, I believe. And we did an episode on it. Um, it's just there's so much that went into picking that oh, word. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you went with that. So yeah. are you are you imagining... I'm, I'm imagining, like, yeah, words being pitted against each other and... Is there? I I want to say that there's betting involved, but that doesn't. I don't. I don't imagine word nerds are actually betting on which I, which words are be words of the year. I mean, to to go really deep, I would even bet on which letters are going to make it into the word of the year. And, Whoa. You know. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, if you know the poll and you can, you know, you have the odds and you know the if there's some sort of scale of topicalness and and what's newsworthy and things like that. Uh, betting mm-hmm. is a neat is a neat approach, especially with the grid. Interesting. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, that's all that I is... wrote down. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm, yeah, who are the players in this in this moment? The players aren't the dictionary. You no, are... to me, you were like the like I, I'm trying to picture like who's hanging out at Merriam Webster. You know, ah, <laughs> like okay. like I'm thinking like the writers' room at SNL, but you're the writers' room at a at a dictionary social media site <laughs> uh, all know, right yeah i like 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 hip word nerds mm-hmm. but i would think that from a <laughs> betting a side out there. Uh, from a betting side you might really be you know political parties you might be sports figures that people you're probably anybody who's done anything bad you don't want your word to be the word so that's it, a, it could that's be a, a good point variety so of industries has... like betting or you know giving their influence so their word doesn't make it in there right yeah so each word has different categories attached to it so it could be both uh the kind of career set that that each word came from and also the implication of it because there are some good words that become word of the year um so have like two different categories and you are choosing which one you want to end up on top or end up on bottom you maybe bet on both and then um, taking like a real like Super Bowl approach to it is is what comes after it is just like the deals that are gonna are gonna happen after that. Like if your word gets in there and it's bad, like you're done. But if it's something good that you know who's gonna who's gonna be making money off of that word in the future? And I don't interesting. Know. I don't know. All it's right. a whole other world that doesn't exist, but it, it seemed <laughs> neat to me. Sounds good to me. <laughs> um, the other one I don't really have that much on. Um, it was, uh, have you seen those, uh, entomology graphs where it graphs the, uh, 
the formation of a word. Yes, that's where neat. You, where you find out that uh, different words are related in, in weird, different ways. Yep. Um, and so what I, you start with a word, and then it branches out, and sometimes the branches die, and sometimes other words come in and merge with other words. And so it was basically like a... I wanted it to be a route building deduction game. <laughs> okay. Where you were where you were building routes. So you start with you start at the end. You start at the modern day and you have a word that you start with. Everyone else starts with a different word. And you want to build a route to the origin of the common origin of all of these words. And so you are building connections to different um different countries with their origins you're building um pronunciation and translation um and you and you want to end up at the origin and you don't want your line to die out and so i don't know how that would work so if your line dies out does the word just never existed (laughs) uh well like you never made it to the origin (laughs) if you're if you're making it if you're building backwards it you your word actually came from a different origin. Gotcha. So and so it, it 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 only existed because another word came in and merged with the real word. Um, but man, just me saying route <laughs> route building and deduction game sounds super weird. Yeah, but that, I, mean, I would I would play something like that. No, I would too. The, the anything route building is neat. Like I'm just kind of getting into some route building. Um, mm-hmm. I just played some of my first train games. It's something I've never really done. I played string railways, which is just because of the uh, yeah the whole the way that, that it's neat. so different than everything else was right up my alley. But I didn't know what it was different then. Like I just played Whistle right. Stop for the first time. Uh, nice. You know, I'm working on uh, Penny Rails with uh, Travis Hill. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to kind of get into that a little bit without um, without having to do the deep dive <laughs> into like 18xx yeah. or whatever. I don't know yeah, a lot for about real, it. Real? Why on earth did train games get such a large portion of gaming it, it is you know what's really is funny is we have a lo- we have a local game store here and the guy specializes in magic magic the gathering and i'll stand there in line and people are doing two cards for four hundred dollars in front of me selling or buying so i mean mm-hmm. it's it's high level magic the gathering sales but when he first had his board game section he told me that he almost exclusively plays train games so he's almost going to exclusively sell train games and that might have lasted like a month, <laughs> uh, and a That's couple a of those point. ones are still there. You know, six, seven years after they've opened, a couple of those initial train games are still sitting on the shelf, and it's been taken over by everything else. But it's a it's a subset of a subset, and it, it they're content. It, it's it's neat. It's 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 neat to see that you could be content in this small genre and not have to just buy everything. And speaking to somebody mm-hmm. who's not buying anything right now, I'm sure you can yeah. appreciate that side of it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, because yeah, so, yeah, because what other games have route building that aren't specifically train games? Yeah, like, maybe like, like a city Power builder. Grid. Yeah, Power Grid. Anything where you're, mm-hmm. you're sort of building a city and uh, sort of like some pick up and deliver games that are mm-hmm. you know, but they're usually vehicle based. Right. <laughs> they're not word based. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yes, that that would definitely be a unique spin on it. And they're mostly, as far as I know, not deduction, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, all right, I guess I'm working on this game now. <laughs> it's neat. But I, that's all I have for Lexicographer. A surprisingly more amount than I thought. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. That's cool. So, there, we have something that we're going to announce, and we're going to announce it in tomorrow's episode. How is this mm-hmm. for, a, for a teaser? Uh, but it has to do with Rob, and it has to do with designing, and it has to do with the show, and you just have to wait till tomorrow to figure that out. <laughs> Stay tuned. Um, so for now, Rob, tell everyone where they can find you. You can find me on Twitter at Rob the Kramer. 
That is where I do most of my tweeting, and you should check out a thread that I'm doing right now where for every like my post gets, I post a picture from my design diary. It's great. And it has some good stuff, it has some bad stuff, but it all has terrible writing. <laughs> it is pretty terrible. I saw that. <laughs> uh, but you, you get into some drawings, and, and there's some there's a lot of... Yours is very visual. Mine's all words yeah. right now. Yeah, I like, I like drawing. I like... I've, I've wanted to design a game just straight from the visual first. So I want to get that, that picture, uh, that question of someone saying, do you, do you start with mechanisms or do you start with a theme first? And I say, neither. The visuals. <laughs> I start with a sketch. <laughs> that's exactly. cool. I start with a limitation usually. That's, that's where I start. Yes. Well, obviously with this podcast. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Well, we'll be back tomorrow with some big news. See ya.